Okay, so let me show this thing again, how we are creating the Java project. So what we are doing, we are going on file, then there is an option, new, and here we have option project. So we are creating new project. Here you have to select what kind of project you are making. So we are making Java project. Inside the Java, you have an option, Java project. Click on the next, and then you will have to put project name. So I am putting the project name, let's say as August Batch, something like that. You can give any name. The rest of the things keep as it is, don't select anything and then click on next. Once you click on next, again it will show that there is a by default source folder it will create. <clears throat> you don't have to click on anything, don't worry about it, and then just click on finish. Once you do that, at the left side, if you see August batch, this project will be visible. And under that, there are two things. One is a GRE system library. So it's saying that it is using Java runtime environment system library, Java SE 1.8, automatically it will come whatever is present in your system. Another thing is SRC folder will come. Nothing is there. As of now, it is blank. You have to create the project here. You have to create your program and packages and all the things here. Before that, let's understand what is this Project Explorer. Project Explorer gives you the some kind of folder structure, the project structure, wherever it is stored. So for example, how, how to see this Project Explorer? First of all, for some of you, maybe on the first time when you install Eclipse, it will not be visible. How to make it visible? You have to go to Windows, and here you have show view. In the show view, you have to select project explorer. Then this view will be shown. There are a lot of other things will be so shown. You can do minimize. If any other thing is visible on your Eclipse, you have to just do minimize. Now, what? how we can make the program now? Go to SRC right click here and again new and then you should select let's say package i'm giving a name let's say uh, package so what is package package is the group of classes so uh, if you have more number of classes you can put inside your package so it's a good practice to make a package first and then inside that we'll make java class so you have to do right click new and then there will be option class so once you select class you have to provide a class name so there is a nomination here that class name should start from capital letter. So I'm giving just a name first program. Okay. And then you have to click on finish. Once you do that, if you see here how it will come automatically. So what it is saying on the first line package, practice package, this means this class is under this package and public class and then class name which you have provided so in java what happens is whatever is the program name here it's the same name as the class name here now let's understand how to write very first program what we will do we will just print something today we won't do anything, any complex thing. We'll try to understand how Java program is written and how it gets 
executed. So let's let me write here public static void me and then string ART here the opening curly braces and the closing curly braces of main function and here i'm writing system dot out dot it's taking time it will come system dot out dot print ln print ln and here inside the bracket and keeping this is my first program something like this and I'm saving this to, to save it the shortcut shortcut is control s otherwise you can click on this icon if you see and the top left side you have save icon or in the file you can go and you can select save okay let's understand this program what happens actually whenever you will execute this program that execution will start from the fifth line what enter what java java does is when you execute it it will search where is the main function is written so main is called a function we will talk about why the, the name of the main function is public static void in some future class we will discuss why i'm not discussing this thing today is because it requires a a, 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 a level of you know um programming maturity you can say or after four to five class when I mean, i'll cover what is the return type of a function what is a static what is public so there are different uh, you know th these are the itself different topic what is public access specifiers what is a static what is void what are the attributes which you can give the parameters you can give in any function that i'll describe surely but as of now understand this thing that you have to write main function in this way and whatever you will write inside so main function it has some scope so the scope starts from fifth line and it is ending at eighth line let's say and we have just one command here System dot out dot three point, and this is case sensitive. Means you cannot write small s s y s t n then out in capital letter and then print. It's not like this. The syntax is you have to write in this way only. Otherwise, it will give you an error. So, what is system dot out dot print ln? It's like a command where whatever you will put inside the double quote it will print as it is so for example here system dot out dot print and this is my first program if we execute this program the same thing will get printed somewhere so let's execute it how to execute any program you are on this editor window you can right click here I'm right click. I'm doing a right click here. Run as so you will get an option Java application. So I'm clicking here and it is executed. And the output will be visible in console window. This is called output window or console window. So if you see here whatever we have written is coming as output here okay let's change this text so that we see that in the command in which 
change anything. Hello? Just about something like this. So let's run this. Now understand what the other ways to run. In the left side, inside your project, you have this class. What's the one? There also you can right click and you can do run as Java application. Once you run it, the output will be visible here. Another way of running a program is if it is already run. Here, if you see, there is an icon, play icon is there, right? It's called run. Here is a drop down. You can click on drop down and you have to select what program you are running. So I'm running first program. That is my class name. You have to select it, click it. It is again executed. Okay. So let's see what else we can do inside system dot I think system dot out dot print ln and inside that you can write any expression also. So if I'm writing five plus four, if I'm writing five plus four. Let's see what will happen. I'm executing it again. So if you see here, it's printing nine. That means that you can directly write some mathematical expression also. Okay. You can write other kind of expression also. So for example, I'm just copying it and I'm doing a paste here. Let's say if I write five is equals to equals to five. Okay, what I have written five is equals to is equals to five. So actually two times equal to is a relational operator in Java and most of the languages. What it does is it checks the equality between the left hand side and the right hand side expression. So here it is written 5 is equals to is equals to 5. So it will give you true or false. So let's execute it. So if you see here, it's showing me false, true as of now because 5 is equal to 5. Let me change it to like this 5 is equals to 9. So it should print false. Okay. So this is a very first program where we are checking how it is, how it has executed from the main function. There may be other functions also. So I'm writing, we'll talk about what are the functions, but let's and let understand it public void um, and just writing a name so I'm giving just a name function one and I'm doing system dot dot print ln and then I'm writing hello okay now in the same program we have two functions one is the main function and other function name is function one as well. Now let's execute it. So the thing has happened. If you see here, the same output, hello, testology, five plus four, nine, five is equals to is equals to five, which is true. Five is equals to is equals to nine, which is false. And this is not getting executed. Okay. We'll talk about this. Why this is not executed? Because any function which is other than the main function should be called. If you call it, then only it will be executed. If you will not call it, it will not get executed. So don't worry about it as of now. I just want to show that only the main, main function is executed until you call the any other function then only the other function will be executed and the 
portion of the statement of those function will be executed. So I'm not covering how to call the function. We'll, we'll check in in <clears throat> some other session. Let's make another code here. Today we'll understand about data types also. So we'll cover some of the data types. Now, how to create another program? What we will do, we will go to the same package right click here new and then class because you're making a new class this time i'm giving a name let's say data and let's click on finish <clears throat> now the new class has come here now again public static void name and here. Now <clears throat> we'll talk about the data type. So generally to store a value, you need some kind of variable. Because in program, you you will not do every every time print only, right? There may be some business functions, there may be some calculations, there may be some data that you have stored. And data in the real world are of different types. So for example, when I say 10, when I say 12, and when I say what is the year, so year is 2019, or is the month, any month you can say, let's say it's August, so, num so number is the eight, and August is string character when i ask you uh, in what section you are so if, if we ask to any student in what section you 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 read so it's like you are on section d section a it's a single character so everything when we talk about in the real world is some kind of data type some kind of so and you have to store it in some kind of variable so for example when we stay in java there are different data types and one of the data type is int so if i write int q <clears throat> so if i declare like this what are the things which i can provide in q is q is equals to I can write 123. Why? Int means integer. So what we are doing, it's you can imagine like this that um, Q is an integer. So if you remember in maths, what we say, let's assume x is equals to five. We talk like this, right? In some of some of the mathematical questions. We, we talk like this, let's assume x is equals to 10. Let's assume x is some kind of uh, float values, right? In the same way, in programming also, we are declaring our variable. So here we are declaring q as integer. And now you want to assign a value to q so you will write q is equals to 123 equal to is called assignment operator what assignment operator means is whatever is there at the right side will be assigned to the left side expression it's like this so 123 will be assigned to q you must be thinking why I'm talking about this very simple, silly thing. It's, it's actually very important to understand what happens when you write in Q is equals to 23. I'm opening it and I'll describe what happens when you write in Q is equals to 123. Let's say I'm writing int. <coughs> Q is equals to any value, not just 123. So in Java, when you write int Q is equals to 34, 
so this is a this is called complete expression and in this expression if you see it is ending with the semicolon so every expression in java ends with semicolon and whatever you will write after that will be will be considered as a new expression so let if i write here in p is equals to 23 it's a new statement because you have written it after the semicolon and we will take this now now let's understand and we write in q is equal to 34 what happens what it does is it creates a memory space in the background it creates a memory space in the background it gives it puts the 34 value here and it gives it a name or a like this now its name is q it's like this so whenever you declare any variable what happens in the background is the value 34 will be present in some memory space and then it this 34 value will be assigned to q now when we write int that means when int q so q will have only integer values it's like this you cannot put any other value so what are integers integers are all numbers positive and negative but without decimal so this is very clear whenever you declare something like this it happens like so for example there is another variable yeah. So star is also one character. Asterisk. Okay. So what happens in the background? Is, let me take some other example as of now. Because yeah, it get confused. I'm writing char w is equals to h. So what happens when we declare char w is equals to h? This h will have one memory space allocated in the system here h will have and its name is actually w so w has h q has 24 as a value okay let's take another example when i write double a is equals to not a let's take R is equals to 23.4. Right? Double R, R is equals to 23.4. Again, what happens is it will create a memory space where this 23.4 will be there. 23.4 and its name will be R. Let's write in uh, We have to understand it in detail. What is in? In is data type. In is called data type. In is called data type. What is Q? Q is variable. What is equal to? equal to is assignment operator what is 34 34 is some kind of value so let me repeat here int is actually data type q is actually what we say is variable or it is also called q itself 
is what is 34 then what is equal to equal to i'm not declaring it it's like assignment operator assignment operator and 34 is actually 34 is actually constant or it is also called literal or value so constant or literal or value it is okay fine so let's go back to our program you can so this is called just declaration in the queue we have declared queue is an integer in the next then you are initializing it you can do it on the same line also. So I can write int r is equals to 40, 4, 4, 5, 6, something like this. Now, these are variables, integer variables. So you can play with the integer variable. What I can do in so it's a case sensitive. I cannot write capital I and small and if you give me error. So I have to write in. Let's say T is equals to Q, Q plus R. Okay. So will it print the value? Let's execute it. So I'm executing data type. Then run as the application it is executed and there is no output. It, this program is executed and, and there is no output actually. Why there is no output? Because we can print it until you print it, it will not be shown on the system. What has happened as of now is you put we have put Q is equals to 123. R is equals to this. T is equals to Q plus R. So it has it has calculated Q plus R the right side and it has put on the T, but we didn't print the T value. So uh, what you have to do? You have to write system dot out dot print whatever the variable name you have. So now if you will, if you will execute the same program, print it is printing 4456 plus 123 is Q plus R is actually 4579. So in this way, you can see the result of your program. Let's play with this. Can I do Q is equals to 123.45? No. So try to observe whenever you do some kind of mistake, it will show you the error. See this red underneath line. And if you hover over it, hover means put your mouse over wherever the error is. So it's saying type mismatch cannot convert from double to int so what it is saying that this is the double value which is has the decimal so double is another kind of data type we will see and you need to put it into the integer variable so that is a mismatch that's why it was showing some error Can we do int r is equals to 4456 instead of this? Can I put something like this? So what we are doing, we have declared integer r, but we are not putting integer 
instead of that integer i am putting some kind of string or bunch of character again let's see what is the error it's saying type mismatch cannot convert from string to integer so we cannot convert string is a string we cannot convert it to integer and then put to r it's not possible that's why it was showing this so we have to understand here that particular kind of data type will store specific kind of data so integer stores only numerical values positive and negative so what is the range of uh, integer how many values what kind of value you can put so integer you can put from what is the range of that this two one four seven four eight three six four eight two two one four seven four eight three six four seven positive side negative to positive side it's like this let's talk about another data type very simple one care care i'm declaring care fraction is equals to let's see what does this mean care is the data type section is just the name of a variable you can give any name it's a user defined name i have given my own name section is equals to p and then if you want to print it again you have to write like this what you want to print so whenever you want to print the value of anything you don't have to put it in double quote let's see the understand if i put it into the double quote and if i will execute this program if you see here it has printed for c value which is c plus r and then i have printed section and it is printing as it is it is not printing the value of the section which is p it is printing section why right? because we have to take into the double quote if you want to put a value you should delete this double quote and now if you will execute see it has done as 157 and c if you want to have the combination of string and the value let's say i can write here value of section is equal to plus so what we are doing here this is the way to combine string value as well as some value what we have to do here is whatever you will write inside the double quote it will be printed as it is into the output window when you write plus plus means now it is some kind of variable some kind of value of that variable will come so if we we'll execute now what it will show it will show like this value of section is p in the same way you can print the value of t also so instead of writing like this i can write value of t is t okay so now if we will run this we print it like this let's see one more variable today and then we will close today's session so another variable is double okay double and then some variable names so i'm giving it let's say amount is equals to this something like this sorry so we we'll write next to five zero and now <clears throat> you can print it okay this is from the of the printer so what it will print? It will print as it is 342.5. 5 
five zero and five point five same same thing like this. So I make it five zero one. Okay, print it by equal to five zero one. Now what will happen if I do like this? Plus hundred. I'm writing here. So if I do like this. What will happen now? Amount will be added to hundred, and you'll be able to see that thing. So, for example, here amount plus hundred. So, amount is already three forty two point five zero one. And then it will be added to hundred, and the final amount will be four forty two point five zero one will come. Correct. So we'll talk about more on data type on the next section, or when when we'll have the next session. Next session.